I tell young people now all the time, I definitely tell my kids, if you are even fucking remotely a savage, you'll run these people over. Mm -hmm. This next generation, and I know that every generation thinks the generation after them is soft. They're savages in every but, but generation. But right now, yeah, if you are even remotely a savage, you, you will run over every one of these, yeah. these kids in this next generation. It's think, easy to sit around and fucking cry about everything. Yeah. Get out there and get what you want. It's so how, all out there for the taking right now. Yeah, how do you develop the savage? I think you have it or you don't. Uh -huh. You're born with it or you're not. Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. My name's Alex, that's Kirby over there. Kirby, what do you think of this? I love everything he said. Yeah, I like everything he said. Um, one of the one of the key components of it that it's that resonates with me is well, you know, my favorite word is savage. Um, <laughs> but I use it in two different contexts. Um, the use of the context I use it in is a bad derogatory way, but um, but what he's saying is absolutely true. I mean, I could just look at my own situation. Um, like or like we talked yesterday when we was talking about that property, and I just said, "Be a savage, go for it, give a disrespectful offer." When he's saying, when he's saying the thing of you will be able to eat these people lunch because you're a savage, you can, and that and that's not really in the only in the investing world; it's in the working world also. I mean, I talk to people all the time, and they oh they want to make me go into the office, or oh they want me to make work more than eight hours, uh. No, they wanted to work me too much, so I needed time off. I needed a mental break. You know, they got they got every excuse on why not to do something. So, like Dana White said, if somebody remotely had that dog in them, that go get them attitude, you will outperform everybody because everybody now they got symptoms of why they can't do anything. Um, like the property in Georgia that I was telling you about. Um, the well, I don't know. I forgot what number it was or properties ago. But <laughs> when I put in my offer, my offer was less than my offer was less than the highest offer. And then of course the real estate agent came back to me and was like, Well, we have a higher offer. I could have just been like, Oh, I want to raise my offer. I didn't. I got that dog in me, and I was just like, all right, do you want the deal to close, or do you want to sit here and mess around with FHA and somebody who might do it? Do you want to gamble on this guy going through? And then I just, you know, told her like it was. I mean, they gave me more information they probably should about the seller, not the name or whatever, but, you know, what kind of financing they was using this. And I just broke it down to them exactly the financing they were using, how it could be a gamble or crapshoot on them getting approved. I knew the seller needed the deal to close for sure, and they needed it done quick. And I was like, I'm the person that's going to get the deal, the deal done quick. And I can get it done tomorrow. You got to wait 45 days or whatever, however long you need to wait for this guy. And you still don't know what it's going through because they was using some, uh, you know, VA loans and all this other stuff. And I just had the dog in me to, you know, do the research, know the information and go to the real estate agent and convince them to take my offer, which was less than the highest offer. And that's what I do all the time. I'm never going in and say, oh, that's the list price. I'm going to pay the list price. No, I'm going to go in aggressive and I'm going to convince you that I'm the right person to make the deal. That's it. When it comes to work, like we talked about in previous videos, people were talking about, oh, work conditions is so bad where they had me working extra hours and all that. I don't understand. I don't understand that, oh, they would have me working too hard, mental issues. I'm the guy who volunteered to go to Iraq to get out of debt. And I knew, and I've been there twice before, so I knew it wasn't going to be no walking apart. So all this, these, this new age of everybody's soft need to be hugged and cuddled eighth, eighth place trophies. If you have any amount of dog in you that can fight through, fight through a little bit of stuff, you'll take over. That's my view on it. I agree. Um, I agree. Uh, it it's interesting to see like this new generation, uh, which is my generation. Uh, and it, like Dana White was saying, like you can run over this new generation and it's true. It's, I saw, I, and I was reading the comments like on, not on that video, but he said the same thing in a different video. And someone said that the competition today is so low, which is absolutely true with this new generation. It's look, there's little to no competition. It's just, there's been so many standards set for what's acceptable. Like, like you said, like, oh, you have to have the, you know, 
comfortable work conditions. You have to have all these rules set in place to make sure everyone's happy, the mental health and all this stuff. When it's like, if you're going to have a select few that will do what you did, right? Where you went to Iraq to pay off debt. The majority of people aren't going to do that. So the majority acceptance is that, oh, don't do that. You know, be in this little bubble. Then you have the people that stand out. And then the ones that stand out, people are just like, oh, you're just, you're crazy. Why would you do that? Like, you don't have to do that. And I get like, I'll get peers and stuff tell me things like, oh, you don't, you know, why don't you do this? You know, do you really want to take that risk? Or do you really want to buy right now with the market going down? Do you really like, and they they don't understand, like, you're never going to get ahead if you don't take those risks, if you don't jump right into it. And I think people forget, like, we live a short term period on the world. We don't we're not it's not like we have hundreds of years to like, all right, yeah, yeah. In 100 years from now, let me take the risk. Like you only got about 80 years. Like so you got to you got to go all into it. And um, yeah, I just I love what he said, because it it speaks to the whole world, really. And you can't even see like in the comments, people are arguing back and forth. Some are like. Well, maybe people don't want to just work for a company that doesn't give a crap about them. Like, okay, so he's not referring to like work a, you know, work a job at McDonald's. Like he's referring, go out, take risk, you know, create your own income, create, you know, like Dana White did too. If you read the story on Dana White, how he started UFC from like a little fight club from, I think he was in like Boston and moved out West to, you know, start putting together like a, like a ring. And, um, he built it from the ground up and you just have to take so the- so let, let's not get it misconstrued. I'm not telling people, oh, if you are in debt, go go <laughs> go be crazy like me and go to you know right. Iraq and fighting wars and all that stuff. What I'm saying is if you're in a bad situation, you gotta be willing to do something extreme to get out of it. That means working, you know, more than eight hours in a day, you know, working 15, 20 hours in a day just to get out. You got to do extreme stuff to get it done. But people, they're so worried about their mental health and all this other crap. And yeah, it's your generation, but I'm not going to lie. It started in mine. It started with the generation before mine. We coddle the kids to make them feel that they have to be in the safe space. So we we were the genesis of it. But I mean, there's some people that just didn't buy it, buy it. And that is what separates them. So like, like you said, the people who... You go out and take risks and they say, oh, you crazy. Why would you do that? You go take the risk and be successful. Y'all could be in the same situation. Y'all both could be heavily in debt. You go take the risk and you get out of debt. They scared to take a risk and they stay in debt. And then they get mad at you and say, you're the reason why they don't have any money. Yep. Oh, oh, because now Alice got all the money and, and now he don't pay enough taxes and all this. But you could do the same thing. There is nothing that me and you doing that any ordinary person can do. We don't we don't have to have sophisticated degrees and all this stuff to do what we're doing. What it is is people are lazy and they want everything handed to them, handed to them. So Dana Wright is one hundred percent correct. If you is out there, if you're out there and you're a true go getter, you're not worried about appeasing everybody to the right and the left of you. You just out there going to get it, keeping your head down, going to get it, no matter if it's work, no matter if it's business, no matter if it's investment, no matter what it is. You will outachieve ninety nine percent of your peers, and yeah. that's how that's how it works. Sorry to cut you off, but I just had no, to throw that in there. And like, I can't even express that enough. Like, just because the world sets these standards and these conditions where you can abide by them if you want to, you can stay in this bubble. You can just go to your job, work eight hours a day, go home, not do anything, taking risk or anything like that, or you can have the what was it the stress cards like just because you can take advantage of these things in the world because they give them to you doesn't mean you necessarily should if you actually want success you have to go outside of your bubble and even speaking to um say it not even to entrepreneurs but people that just want to move up the ladder in their workplace companies will recognize it if you're working harder than everyone else and mm-hmm. i mean just speaking to myself like um some people call me stupid for doing this but at work when i started as a dispatcher there was only so much overtime you could get but because i just enjoyed working with the people that i work with 
and I was building relationships with, uh, say, some of the managers who, or Chris, actually, who eventually I met you, you know, so relationships are important. So I stayed there working off the clock, helping other people. And eventually, I mean, I moved up to senior management within a couple of years. And most people are like, how are you senior management? You're only in your early 20s. But it's possible if that's someone's goal to move up in the workplace. It don't, you know, yeah. if, if you have a goal to be an entrepreneur, you're going to have to go, you know, beyond that. But if you're just looking to even in the workplace where some people will say, oh, not everyone has not everyone can be rich or whatever, you know, all these made up beliefs. But to uh to be an entrepreneur and invest in real estate I've, i was reading comments today where like people were saying not everyone can bro- can buy one unit how do you expect us to uh to buy a three a triplex or a fourplex and like with the fha loan like really like they they just there's always an excuse behind people's like you know madness it's just it's stupid well, well it's easier to give an excuse than actually do do the work i mean like again me and you are doing nothing different than anybody else. You have a job. Other people have a job. The only difference between you and them is the money you work for, you use that money to create more. Right. What they want is they want to use the money that they work for to go do all the stuff that they want to do and then hope, hopefully somebody just give them a house. Yeah. That's the, that's the only difference. What's also funny, and like Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Just use this channel as an example. Like, there will be people who, and I'm not trying to say, you know, these people suck or nothing, but there'll be people who make less than you and me who will say, oh, why would I start a YouTube channel if it's not going to pay me? But here you and me are starting this YouTube channel where we're not making anything. We're just making videos and we still make more than, you know, it's like, you just have to do stuff that you have to eat crap, like Gary Vee said. You just have to do it. Like just deal with it until until you make it. Right. And if everybody wants that instant gratification where, oh, I do this today, I want to be paid for it tomorrow. They they have the worker mentality. Ownership right. mentality is hey, I'm going to work, 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 work. And then in the future, maybe it'll pay off. But I'm going to take the risk to do it. And it's not a, oh, I'm just going to oh. Buy a lottery ticket and be like, oh, well, it paid me or it didn't. That's it. I want to know instantly right now. I mean, you can go through the history of America, history of the world, people creating businesses. I mean, we can go to the Elon Musk's who was days away from being bankrupt and shutting down Tesla. Um, you can go, you can go to Bezos who was doing this out out of his garage. Uh, I mean, you can go Steve Jobs, you can go a lot of places with this. The people who who just ate the suck. They just ate the suck until, you know, it paid off in the future with many years of it looked like this thing ain't going to come to fruition. And then they made it out on the other side. But everybody just wants to. I mean, as we see it all the time with people that buy stocks. They want to buy stocks that day and want to see it shoot up 100, 200 percent that day. Yeah. You know, I always talk about I like the market going down because I know when I buy it, when the market going down, you see the flip side of it. But only thing people can see is, oh, it's going down. It's going down. This is going to go to zero. What? What? What do you? <laughs> That's people that don't do homework. Yeah. That's people that don't want to. They don't understand the company. They, they don't understand how the company makes money or anything else. Those are the people who look on YouTube, see somebody give a stock a stock tip, and they think, oh, this person gave a stock tip. They must know more than me. Buy it, then it keeps going down and it's trash. But that's the fault of the people. Because like I said, they want everybody to do the work for them and they get the gratification out of it. But people that do that, buy stocks and then just hope it just shoot up 100 or 200 percent. One, they don't study the market because not all stocks do that. Majority of stocks don't do that. And number two is they're super lazy because if they did a little bit of the homework and knew how the company operated, they would see that the company was either one, not making money, two, not profitable, or three, it was a sinking ship from the get-go. But because, oh, they heard it somewhere else, now they have somebody to blame when it don't work. Instead of saying, mm-hmm. instead of doing the work, they just wanted somebody to blame. Like I said, everybody want a shortcut to have an excuse on why they don't have none. Yeah, and you shouldn't have excuses. Now, if you have, you should have questions, but each answer to those questions should get you closer and closer to your, your objective or your goal. And I was watching a video on like Kevin O'Leary, who was talking about in one of his seminars, 
there was a, a student who was cash flowing $5 million a year, and his business was ran out of his dorm. And he told Kevin, he said, look, I have this business, you know, I'm cash flowing $5 million a year, but my girlfriend wants to break up with me because I'm not spending enough family time and time with her. And he said, which one's easier to replace, the business or the girlfriend? <laughs> it's like, you know, so many people, though, would say, no, why would you, you know, you're making enough money, you should go with your girlfriend, you know, but down to the individual, what is your goal? If you literally sacrifice all that time to build a business, because it's not like an overnight thing, you just get a business cash flowing $5 million a year. All the sacrifices you put in to get that, and now you have to throw that away for someone that can be replaced. I mean, it's just, it's insane. Kevin, Kevin O'Leary got that dog in him. He got that, he got what they're talking about. A lot of people in this generation don't have it in there. They just, oh my God, this is the one last person. I have to sacrifice everything. And then the flip side of that is, so let's say you did give up the business for the girl and then you go broke. Is the girl going to stay with you? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So or if she leaves you either, you know, anyway, then now you're, you're out of both. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah this generation, but I, I can't blame it on just saying it started with your generation. Uh, my generation, the generation before me, we created y'all savages. So <laughs> yeah, that's the reason, that's the reason the way y'all are. I mean, that's the other way to I, I don't deny that. Yeah. The, I don't deny it. And um, it's a lot of people in my generation that, that are like that also. So we see, I see where it came from, and then y'all just a byproduct of it now. Y'all come out the womb, just hand me everything, or <laughs> or I'm not doing nothing. So yeah. But with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. Subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.